Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's Free CompTIA A Plus Certification Training Course on Network Types. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to talk about the requirements from our CompTIA Exam 220 701, Section 4.3, where we need to understand all of these different kinds of networks. And specifically, we're going to talk about what is defined in the CompTIA requirements as broadband. We'll also talk about dial up, Bluetooth, and cellular networks. Let's start our conversation with what we consider to be high-speed networks. Sometimes you see that written as broadband, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the communication method that's going across that network happens to be a broadband type of communication. These days, it's almost become a watchword or a catchphrase for a high-speed network. The first kind of high-speed network is one that's extremely common on many environments today, which is DSL. And there's different flavors of DSL. DSL stands for Digital Subscriber Line, and one of the benefits of DSL is it's using your existing phone line to make this work. So you can start to see why providers of phone service might think that this is a great way to get a higher speed networking and digital network into people's homes because you don't have to put any wire in the ground. You simply use the existing wire going into the house. You add some extra filters, put in a modem onto the network, and now suddenly they've got a much higher throughput of communication that they can do. And you don't have to use any other type of method to be able to do that. Use your existing phone lines. ADSL is probably the most common DSL line or DSL configuration that you will see in the United States and other places in the world. Since it's using these regular telephone lines, all of these lines are going back to a central office. And if you've ever looked at a phone line, there's not a lot of shielding on those lines. There's not a lot that, that restricts data from flowing across or outside of those. So it's very easy when you get a bunch of those stuck together, you'll get some crosstalk between it. It becomes a little bit more difficult for that signal to get through. And that's why you can downstream receive a lot of traffic, but upstream is a little more complicated because everybody is going back to a central point. And so therefore, your speeds are a lot slower on the upstream side of things. And you can also see there are limitations here as well. Um, about 10,000 feet, uh, if we want to use some of the terms here in the US, from the central office, from the place where this equipment is. Once you get farther away from that, your signal strength begins to degrade. And you can't quite get that digital signal all the way down the line using these very, very, well, in these days, very old style of communication across phone lines. So you'll see generally, you can have speeds up to 24 megabits per second down and 3.5 megabits up. Probably the vast majority of DSL and specifically ADSL installations go a lot slower than that. You may have one and a half, maybe three megabits in many places, depending on the type of technology that DSL has been put in in your environment. There are other ways to send DSL signal through. For instance, there is a symmetric digital subscriber line. There's not really a standard for this, but the idea was that the speeds coming down would be exactly the same as the speed going up. It is symmetric. And because of the proprietary nature of that method, we never really got a standardization on SDSL but you may see it out there occasionally. What we're starting to see roll out in other places is something called VDSL, which is very high bitrate DSL. The idea is we're taking this technology to the next level. And the ideal uh, throughput through these is going to be something from around 4 megabits per second all the way up to 100 megabits per second. So here's a technology that really is competing with a lot of the other higher speed technologies like cable modem access that is giving you very, very high amounts of throughput. A cable modem is another way of sending some of this high speed signal in. Speaking of these competitors with DSL, cable modems probably one of the biggest and primarily because not only do we have copper telephone lines coming into our homes, many people also have this copper coax connection for their television. And as you've probably noticed, even television signals are turning digital. Well, if I can get video that is digital, why not get data that is digital? Which is exactly the way the cable providers have implemented this. They put a modem them in your facility, and you, they run something called DOCSIS, which is Data Over Cable Service Interface Specification. It's a standardized way for this data to be transmitted from place to place over a cable network. The speeds here are very similar to that higher speed DSL, so between 4 megabits up to 100 megabits. And the, the cable technology, the cable modem technology, continues to improve. We're seeing higher and higher bit rates there. Not everybody has that coax cable coming into their house. You may be in a very rural area. You may be outside of where a cable provider might be. 
So there are other options as well, things like satellite communication. This is a HughesNet satellite dish that is showing what you would need just to be able to send and receive data via a non-terrestrial link up to a satellite and back. This does require that you have specialized equipment. You're going to need a dish, obviously. You're going to need a clear sight to be able to see, if you will, that particular satellite that's in the sky. And one thing to keep in mind with this communication, it is very specialized, primarily because it has a relatively long latency. That the Sending that signal all the way up to a satellite and all the way back down again takes some time. Even though we're going the speed of light, if you will, there's still a little bit of delay associated with that. So you still see some nice speeds, though. Speeds up to 5 megabits per second. You'll see this, and sometimes it's a, a, a point of sale type communication. So you go into a convenience store. On top of the convenience store is a satellite dish because they know that they can always have connection to their corporate network through that satellite connection. So in some cases, it makes perfect sense. If you're out on a farm, another place, you really don't have any other options. A satellite communication may be a really good example of what you could use to get high-speed internet connections out in the middle of nowhere. In relatively populated areas, we're starting to see a rollout of optical fiber, fiber that goes right up to your house and plugs in. And as you can recall from some of the other modules that we've done, optical fiber means very high speeds. You're able to do a lot over a single fiber connection. And what you end up having is this box that they'll put on the side of your house. They'll have the fiber that's plugging in. It's in the back of this. You can't even see it in this particular picture. And on the front of it are connections for your telephone, connections for a network, connections for a television. Now you've got all of these different services all coming into your house through a single connection, a very high speed connection. So you have very high speed data, probably 100 megabits or and even higher as in many cases, especially business class. You have all of your voice communication coming in. You have you have all of your uh, your digital television signal coming in, really providing you with multiple services over that single fiber. It really allows you to have the best of both worlds here. You've got complete control over all of these different integrated services, voice, video, and data, and you only have to worry about a single connection coming in. Now, obviously, that means you have a single provider for this service, and that can be a bit of a problem in some cases. But as long as you're able to get fiber in your facility and plug it into the side of your house, you've really got a lot of flexibility here. You've got much more capabilities for speed and for access than you ever had before.